doing this is holding your eye is weird and Far into the future, mankind has spread to the stars. The cybered wars are behind us, but conflict between the great corporations of Earth continues. As they vie for supremacy, battles small and large rage across the galaxy. The Typhia system is the new battleground, where a key jump gate has been discovered that will allow travel to the other end of the galaxy. This will allow massive expansion and wealth to the corporation that controls the gate. Eight corporations will fight for this right. Only one will be victorious. Alright, so that was the introduction to the game. So, that's pretty much the plot. So... Initially you'll see a black space on this video, I will try to crop and zoom it the best I can. So I'm just gonna go through my preferences. Oh, it's cool. It's right here. So, real time has been introduced in the game, which means the game goes real time. So, I'll explain that to get further into the game, but let's go turn based anyway. So we have eight corporations to pick from here. I think just for this playthrough, I'm going to go Unitech because most everyone should recognize Unitech from the last game. And some of these other corporates have really, their own special benefits and disadvantages. Um, so let's just go to Unitech. Unitech Corporation. Cautious to the extreme. Unitech is a rigid corporation with strict controls and regimens. Unitech seeks victory through longevity. So here's this little paragraph talking about how Unitech basically did all the working at Cyprus and whatever. But Unitech is defensive. Also because of this little line right here, but all your primary facilities are at level 2, except for the launch pad, which starts at level 3. And also you get free terrorists to protect your base during base defense missions. So I'm going to accept this. And then keep quiet during another cutscene. Corporate affiliation selected. Now transiting to Typhia system. Prepare to select base location. Alright. So right here up here you'll see, please note that it is a first come first serve. So it means if you want a certain terrain to pick your base, you might not get it. Although there is a workaround, which mostly just involves you uh, hitting the back button, reselecting your corporation, and then check to see if it's available, and then if it's not, just keep repeating it until it is. 
from. I found the overall Atlas. best terrain is grassland and uh, lush. Although you can pretty much pick whatever you want. Oasis. description. Uh, Oasis is a dry planet because it's mostly desert. Greenland is Iceland, Greenland is Iceland, but... Atlas. Alright, so it's not available, so I'll show you what I mean by the soul trick. Corporate affiliation selected. Atlas. Unitech corporate affiliation selected. Atlas. Don't worry, guys. Oh, I'm to oh, spend like two minutes of this video doing this. Atlas. There we go. Alright. Just like that. Lush. Sometimes you can be the first Oasis. person to do Frost it. Fire. Atlas. Grasslands. But Lush. this has got enough cover, enough open. Uh, it's a really balanced area, and it has a good enough cover to where all herks and vehicles work. And there are vehicles, not just search in this game. So let's just go into the regular. Base location, location selected. Herc base. Everyone has a greetings message. That really goes off. So, where do you start, really? So a good way I think you can generally start is. I will go with the vehicle facility, which is the new Herc Bay. Vehicle facility. So usually you'll, you'll get two Herc slash vehicle combo to start with. So let's just go with the giant. So it's roughly the same setup from the last game. You have your systems in one section, your weapons in another, and then your components are in another one. So, but I'll, I'll go through some of the things to show you all the new stuff. Armor is much more easier to understand in this game because the last game was just effectively the higher the number, or if it was clear blast, then you were fine. But these values will change as you get better armor. The drive is pretty much the same. Um, reactors are much more modifiable in this version. It's still the same, you know, you have your drive, you use your reactor, and then use, like, the drive afterward. But this one lets you choose how much you actually need, rather than just a set amount. So I think they balance it a bit better in this game. So. Uh, shields. The only real thing that's really different in shields in this game is you can't focus shields, and it's octagonal, I guess. It's not a hexagon anymore, so there's eight sides to it instead of six. It's not the same hex system, it's a grid system. Sensors are mostly the same, there's a couple new additions to sensors, which are a sensor pod and cloak detection is if it can detect cloak units in the range plus whatever sensor amplifier type component you have to add to it then it'll detect a cloak unit and sensor pod what that does is right here is saying units equipped sensor pods permanently reveal explored areas so basically it's it's kind of like if you use the um polo cheat from age of empires where it reveals pretty much all the terror, all the fog of war, the areas that you've explored. And Marco is just revealing the whole map. Uh, there's two new things to targeting computers in this gun. It's mostly just the uh, stating more clearly, but it actually, it's pretty much the same in this game now that I think about it. The last game just had percentages. This one's more of just a might just be a percentage just they took it off. So nothing cha really changes. Um, although I think it's funny is this game forces you to use the worst uh, targeting computer. 
in the last game, you got like one slightly better than it. And there are two new things to life support. Ejection and radiation. Ejection is if you lose the uh, vehicle or Herc, then you'll see a little animation appear on screen that will show your bioderm kind of being ejected in a pod. So you'll keep the bioderm. Provided you it dies in the mission and you don't like save and load it back. Uh, shielded versus radiation. So there are two things, two weapons in this game that, as far as I know, two weapons that can qualify as like radiation. There's a rad beam and a scramble beam. Rad beams, if it hits an unshielded target or just one of those, uh, you know, if there's a penetrate, you know, a shield's penetrated and it'll hits through that, it will reduce the health of the bioderm, potentially killing it. So you can effectively have a Herc with no bioderm. Well, there is one, but it's dead. And then, Scramble Beam reduces stability. And stability is much more important in this game than it was in the last game. Because if it's low enough, you'll lose, con you'll sort of lose control of the Herc, or vehicle, because it'll just start wandering around and shooting on its own, and it's extremely annoying. So, discipline is another is a new uh, bioderm thing that will help counter that. All right, so on to weapons. Um, uh, I guess some basic ones. Ballistics with a uh, cannon has been renamed to ballistic. Don't get confused. Let's see. Some weapons from the last game, you'll notice that their range modified or different values changed. Like, for example, the PBW had 100 damage versus shields and armor. This game, it's only 80 each. That's been there. But this is what I'm talking about. So if you had real time, every three and a half seconds, you'd fire a shot. So generally how it goes is that if you had like uh, one shot a second, you'd fire one shot a second. So, you know, you're playing turn based. You know, how would you understand that? And what you would do is that ge the general rule of thumb is that, at least that would I've come up with, is that, uh, is that the lower it is, the more you'll be able to fire a turn. What I've, I think what I've come up with is that generally if it's five shot, at least if it's five or below for the second, uh, sh uh, how many shots you can, er, sorry, how many seconds, um, let me speak. So like I said, yeah, one shot a second. So if you had, I guess, five seconds for every shot, then usually you'd be able to fire one shot a turn, but in real time it'd be, you know, it'd take five seconds for every shot. But generally if you hit like six seconds for shot, per shot, then usually you can fire one off or two, and then you have to wait the next turn because it's reloading or recharging. So, you want to, usually if you want to fire more off a turn for whatever it is, you want this to be as low as possible. And that's definitely much more important in real time than it is a turn-based, but what I've noticed is for turn-based, you want this number to generally be 5 or below if you want to fire one every turn, although it's not the end of, end of, the, end of the world if it, you know, you fire it once and, you know, it suddenly becomes like Piper Beam. So because of that, you can see right here, we have two and a half seconds for every shot, but this one, one less range, but it fires twice as fast. 
Vehicle modification completed. So I'm actually gonna go with this. And the internals, there are new types. Um, in this game, you will not. Uh, I'm gonna have to be happy to say you won't see the uh, noise from the first game whenever you have to do mining missions 50 times. Um, so there is a salvage system, which mostly just lets the vehicle or her recover your or destroyed enemy chassis on the field and give you a little bit of extra credits. Uh, the sensor amplifier is being named to scan amp and it's available right off instead of having to wait to rank 8. Like for example, we have the targeter. 25% boost all your firing, so it helps you target things better. Vehicle so I'm gonna choose this. Completed. Mines are in this game, and mines can be really fun to use, and also something you need to watch out for. Especially if you're attacking a mining site or a base. So we got the giant customized. I'll just call this explaining giant. Well, I can't spell that out, but, um, there. I want to say it's something wrong. And this is our raider. Vehicle modification completed. So generally a good way to tell how heavy a Herc is, is do you have it immediately available in your vehicle facility? And how high is the armor? You can kind of, you kind of sort of do this also from the first game. Like generally, the more powerful the armor rating, the more I think it's like the higher the class it was. Also, the shield can kind of help, but vehicle modification completed. Vehicle modification completed. I guess another tip I'm going to say is get used to hearing vehicle modification completed and upgrade complete. Unless you guys want me to shut off a voice entirely. Which I can do. I did it for Max. Vehicle modification completed. Also, they brought Jihad back. It's a little easier to use in this game than it was the last game in my opinion. Although, it doesn't feel as powerful. It's... Still not that useful. Vehicle modification completed. Oh yeah, also you can actually use the basic EMPs and not feel like you have to miss half the time. Which is nice. Vehicle modification completed. But um this is another thing I wanna show. So in any weapon slot, if you go to the very bottom on empty, you can see what it supports. So this is something you want to keep in mind too. And then we have this little section down here. Um, for the reactor, you usually want to have at least an excess of 100 over your used power. So you like, if this was like 600, you want at least a 700. So we're gonna buy some stuff. You can now sort things, which is cool, I guess. Let's just do that. Let's see what I wanna buy here. Let's get a sensei. Vehicle constructed. Oh, they can. They usually will come out here and spit on a platter, which is cool, I guess, if you're into that. Planter. See, the Lanzar only has three slots, but it's still a pretty good vehicle, actually, if you want to use it. So, actually, I will use it. Vehicle constructed. Uh, certain unit, certain vehicles and perks like the Senseis do have the better sensors, but it's not just Shadow and Sensei anymore. There's a, a bunch of other units that tend to have it too. Usually it's medium or lighter units. You'll never, as far as I know, you'll never see it on a heavy Herc. Vehicle modification completed. 
Actually, that's good. Everything's good here. Vehicle modification completed. But, um, please let me know with comments or anything like that if vehicle modification completed or upgrade complete gets too repetitive. Vehicle modification completed. Because that's something I definitely want to make sure I'm not doing. Vehicle modification completed. Because I feel like I just want to shut off Perfect now, so I'm not. Um, you know. Vehicle facility. But. So hopefully Perfect I explain the vehicle facility right there. Um. Let's see here. Well, what's next? Um, let's go command center. Command center. All right. So the bioderm link function is now in the link command center. Management. Uh, pretty much it. I feel like I spelled that wrong. It looks wrong. Command center. But this is definitely one of the most important research. research. So here is where you get to. You can, this button really doesn't matter too much, so I'll go through it. Um, you can auto or manually allocate it. Even if you manually allocate it, you can still leave it on auto. So, I don't know what this button is really supposed to do. It never really changes when you want it to, or if you click it, but whatever. So, you have your, you can, and this is where you can choose if you want to invest more in a certain component parts of your vehicles like if you want better shields you can put more in shields you know get level 10 shields and have level 1 everything else but what I like doing to make sure you go get everything up balanced and make sure you're getting all the sensors and computers and everything is you go to this button down here where it says set all and then what I like doing is just give it a ridiculously high number Yeah, I know, I know, I kind of know what this amount is already, I've played this enough, but, so the mining income is, research um, fund approved, command center, how what comes from, so the more mines you own, generally research. have a slightly better credit, not really credit, but you have more research income, so you can research things faster, and you can attack and defend mining sites to get more income. But if you have a mine limit, like, you can attack as nine mines. So even if I took another mining site and I was at my max, I'll get a message pretty much saying we can't support that, and they'll just leave it to somebody else. But this way, making sure you just put in a number that's high and it'll balance it out to everything, even if it says insufficient number, it'll just go to the next possible number and then just balance it all out for you. So this way you have everything up at the same time. And to me that's the best way to do it. Command center. Um This is so not really important screen. Uh, it's just so you know how everyone else how usually better than everyone else is than you. Um as you can see we're not good at net worth or tech. Or military strength, or income. And what I've discovered is, I played as another corporation called Hypersonic, which is right there in the fourth spot in net worth. And they can and let, one of their abilities is like they get better intelligence than other corporations. So what you can do with that is get more accurate numbers to how good everyone else is. And on hard, I've discovered that they give them free boosts. They have better tech than you, more money, more research income, you name it. So you start off behind. And I'm not a fan of that difficulty style, where the harder it is, the more cheats they get. To me, that's a, just a poor AI. It's like it's like a lazy game design decision to me. Command center. I'd rather prefer them just to be, you know, smarter and better managing of their resources and cash and everything. Than just, oh, here's a free boost. 
because at this point, it's not really how good are you at playing catch. It's also usually it helps, you know, you play catch up and you're good at being, you know, you can manage being behind. And that's a really good skill if that, you know, you ever get behind. But it's also, you're basically playing against cheaters all the time. And that's not fun. To, you know, this game, you know, still really fun, although that feeling doesn't help. Alright, so facility, facility management, management is definitely one of your most important screens. So as you can see right here is it in what we discovered when I picked my corporation. Is that this is all level 2, and as I mentioned, this is level 3. Oops. Alright, so let's go over all the buildings. So as you see here, the higher your launch pad level, the more you can send. So I'll try to I'll use this black space and I'll kind of put some side information on the screen if I feel I don't say it right here. But as oh, as far as I know, level one launch pad is two vehicles or hercs. Level two for the launch pad is three. Level three is what you can see right there on screen is four. And with Unitech, I can only send four anyway. So. I don't really need to upgrade that. That's fine. Because uh, as you see right here, note the upgrades to your launchpad do not allow you to send more units on a given mission than the maximum allowed by your corporate restriction. So I don't need to upgrade my launchpad. And continuing on, level 4 is 6, I'm pretty sure, and level 5 is 8. actually you make this full screen but yeah and vehicle facility is it's really basic generally the higher your level the more um, special or more powerful parts you can get it's no longer rank based Maybe so if I jump back to the vehicle key. facility there are hotkeys uh, right here so that's what I'm doing right there. And if I go to con uh, construct, this is blue. So if you ever see something blue in this game, it generally means you can't access it. Biodome facility, command oh. center. There we go. So what I've discovered is that level one is usually light units. Level 2 for vehicle facility is like medium-ish units. Level 3 doesn't really do anything. What I've noticed is that I think level 3 is usually you'll get access to the mid, I guess like the mid section between medium and heavy. When you, because generally when you get more promotions, you send, you'll get access to newer units that you didn't get to buy previously. But I usually don't see level 3 unlocking anything. Level 4 is usually when you start unlocking things. Some newer units. And then level 5 is like apocalypses and stuff like that. Annihilators. Um, Juggernauts have been renamed to apocalypses in this game. <laughs> so if you still see me call it a Juggernaut, it's the same thing. Weapon wise, it's pretty much the same. Um, the Biodor facility, in my opinion, is much better, even though it doesn't have the link function, although that just meant, you know, they just moved it. Is that you can... <laughs> I'm gonna cough. I feel like I'm gonna cut this out, but... Alright. Um. So. You can heal and, manuf and manufacture, it's just, you know, purchasing. And engineer. So. You can still, uh, healing is there's no like individual heal and stability button anymore command center vehicle just go to this while I talk about it facility. so this is where you heal now so this heals both health and stability there's no detox or stabilize button it's all included in this heal button 
and now we also have a rejuvenate which what that does is that you have this age and what rejuvenate does is it resets us back down to zero so like the, uh, the first game you had biterms that you, you know they would just die out you couldn't do anything about it but in this game you can keep biterms that have ranked up living forever so it's effectively immortality that you have to pay for. Um, engineering Biodome facility. is now in this section. This is where you purchase and engineer them. Oh, these ones suck. Okay. So you spend most of the game engineering biodomes because the base ones usually suck except for the first two you get. And, and if you're Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi has better biota pilots. So. Another thing for upgrading your biota facility is that these values across the board is that the higher your biota facility is, the higher these can go. So right now, I can only get 35 for each of these, and to be honest, that's abysmal. It's so. I'll upgrade my binder facility actually early on, so I can actually get a good value, so I'm not missing half my shots at three range. You can generally go with 35s, although I wouldn't recommend it. I guess since we're here, um, we'll discover some of his skills, but to quickly finish up my other point, the higher your biodome facility, the better you can engineer your biodomes. And I'll, and, um, let's see here. So health is the same. Stability has a much more important value on it. So, before we go to the rest of these, I will actually do that upgrade thing I mentioned. You can, so upgrading costs credits, you can only do it once, I guess, once base visit. So the way, I guess you could say you reset that, upgrading facility. is that, so I upgraded that, and I need to completely return for my next mission to upgrade it again. Biodome facility. So, back to this. See, now we can get this to 50. And this can go even higher. So what I'm going to do is crank this up. And let's just get health to be... Usually I'm not too worried about health. I'm more worried about stability. But let's get health up here to make sure they're healthy. Toxins... Let's get this up to, I'm not too worried about jacking it full of toxins, but just in case. And let's just ramp stability up there. So lifespan, this is what I mentioned about rejuvenation. Each mission counts as a year of life, so it's much more simplified. So you don't want a one lifespan biodome, because the moment you use it, it's going to die. So a good value, I could say, is 10. It's not a bad one. Generally, as you get better, more cash, you can get better ones. So this game makes the learning statistic much more visible, because in the last game, it was generally combat experience, higher rank, geek up, you know, just fight more and it gets better. But this one is the better your learning skill that you give it, will be give it you know more it'll rank up the skills faster so let's get this up because I want my vendors to be smart and not dum dums out of work all right the more willing they they are to carry your commands so this generally falls in line with the stability problem is that if you have like the usually if your stability starts getting lower they will say stability's poor and usually see something like unstable or freaking. Which means 
they start, you know, panicking like XCOM soldiers if they're getting shot at. Um, and they'll start moving around like I mentioned earlier. So in my opinion, discipline is more of a counter to that. And the only other, I guess, comparison I can think of is um, in, po in Pokemon, if usually when you get badges from gyms, they let you, uh, like up to a certain level, the Pokemon would follow you pretty much every command. But if you kind of exceeded that limit, there'd be more of a chance that they would just wouldn't listen to you. So in a way, discipline in this game, the more your dis the discipline they are, the less of a chance that even if their stability is poor or something like that, then they'll still remain calm and work with you. So you want this to generally be higher, and also this is expensive. Some such stats are mu or values are much more expensive than others, which generally signifies their importance. I can actually kick this learning back just a little bit. Let's bring this, this one up to 50. And then command is pretty much the same one. So let's just give this 5 or... I feel like we're spending a lot of money on this. So there we go. Let's give it a name. I'll just say Biodrome Facility Level 3. And as you can see right here and next to the back button in my logo and below the message bar, you'll see Cost Engineer. Cost Engineer. So this is just engineering it. So whatever you engineer a Biodrome, you have to pay for the schematic. Engineering so there successful. we go, I've already paid for it. And this is just asking if I want to make one. Biodurm manufacture. And then Biodurm manufacture. Biodurm manufacture. Biodurm right, facility. Mustang facility management, I want to go over. The command center. So what it's stating is that upgrading the command center makes it much more armored and more health. And it, the more, you know, the higher you are. Command Center says you're increasing your income from mining operations. And if in a base defense mission, if you lose your command center, you lose the game. So it needs to stay alive at all costs. So there's not much to say about that. Um, and I guess I'll go over turrets. The higher the level the turret is, the better the the better it can protect your base. Levels one and two are light turrets, and level three onward are heavy turrets, more weapons that could better mean it better protect your base and more armor and stuff like that. If you lose a primary facility other than your command center, repairing it will keep the level, but you just can't upgrade it later. You know, for the, for these primary facilities, losing it does not mean you have to start back at level one and then keep working up. Turrets, however, you start at level one and have to go back up. There's just no working around that. Perk base. So. Command center. Let's link, link everyone up. management auto link enabled. Command center. Save it. Save like a madman. This game. I'm sorry. And let's get to our missions. So this is the new mission selection screen. It's, in my opinion, way better than the first game. Because in the first game, you had four mining missions, four military missions, elite military mission. And it was, it was I think it was harder to record that game because there's no real... You can't really structure the missions unless you want to say, I'm good to like 50 mining missions in a row and then get all the cash that way. Because if I wanted to, I could just made a whole, uh, I guess, let's play of constant mining. <laughs> but I'll go over how this screen works. There are a few different ways to access the same mission. Uh, right here, lets you target a specific corporation. And if you click on this, Scary. it'll usually show um, if they have any mines, and you can just target the mines. 
but otherwise, if they don't have any other mines available, scouting. it'll just tell you to go to scouting, or advanced scouting, which is the next one, and base attack, which is the final one. Hypersonic has the ability to skip scouting missions and go straight to advanced scouting. They're the only corporation that I know of that can do that. Actually, they are the only corporation, actually, that can do that, period. Um, also, you can select all your mining missions mining in here. Site. So how mining works in this game is that the more mines you have, the more your research income is, the more fast you can research stuff. And if you... In, but if... if um, so if you go to a mining mission and no one else is there to contest you, you get it for free. You don't have to do anything. It just says, no one else is here, free mining site, basically. But if you do have to go against somebody, usually how it works is that there's a little mark, uh, marker that indicates where the site needs to be set up, and you need to get there basically as fast as you can. If you do it before they get near you, then you'll establish the site, mission completed, someone else is there, but you still built it before they could touch you. So it's, and there is little ore patches, but it's not giant fields that you have to hear repetitive noise to get. Um, exploration usually involves you getting, finding a specific, specific part somewhere on the map, and then bringing it back to your extraction point. And then usually what that does is you get a free boost to your research, extra cash, or some other benefit. Uh, a t another type called special mission will pop up, and those are once, and I guess in a way, once in a, I guess you could say campaign type missions. And But they do stick around if you have to defend a mining site or something like that. Like, you, you know, if you, you had to choose between mining site, exploration, or, you know, special mission, generally special missions will stick around so you can do the other two. And exploration missions usually will stick around for quite a while until someone does pick up the part. And the patrol, patrol. is just, uh, I guess we'll go over garrison. Um. Garrison is you just sit on your butt, get free, you know, your research will keep going, you can get some credits, and you can keep them safe at home. Atlas. Uh, patrol. basic patrol, patrol is, you know how I said there was a scouting mission? Well, patrol mission is the, I guess like you could say, like your way to counter patrol mission, uh, to counter scouting missions. Patrol. Base patrol, patrol is like you know advanced scout an advanced scouting mission except you're playing defense. But I'll go over this right here. Uh, you have your pilots and the vehicles, but you have status over here. So if I tell these two to defend the base, only these two will be sent on the mission. Everyone's active. Everyone goes on the mission. If I tell everyone to defend the base. You can't do that because it'll yell at you and say you have to have someone active. Um, the only time that Patrol. doesn't matter is garrison, where you can have people defend the base or be active on a garrison mission, but everyone will still be at the base. Oh my god, over it. Holy shit, it's been like 43 minutes rambling. Um, Cassidy's moon. So I guess we'll just start with Patrol. the patrol mission. Patrol. Just get some basic Patrol. patrols. Patrol. Send everybody out to protect Mission ourselves. Initiated. So we didn't encounter any 
anybody, as you can see right here. And we have two different buttons, two different sections, telling us we got to go to. So over here you can see a mission bonus and one retrieve, so you can see really how much you did. Oh my god, it's going to so much more motions. So this just gives you a little, like, pep talk, kind of like the last game. I told you, you know, you're doing a good job. This is also a really cool video that accompanies your promotion before it transforms into your logo. Quick base. I got promoted, yay. And also, another thing to do is uh, usually your promotion message toward the end, or just in it will say, you know, we're giving you credits. You know, here's something. Usually, you get, when you get promoted, you usually get something free or access to something new. So usually, you know, getting promoted still means you know free stuff, but not as much free stuff as the last game. So mine gave me more turrets. So that's a free like forty thousand credits I didn't have to pay for. Command center, research. Command center. So once you, you record, um, so up here it'll recommend you do a mission. Command and in center. Here, and also in here. Command center. Also, I think it's funny Command as you realize center. that. If you look right here, it Command condenses. Center. Even though it's the same box. I don't know if it's like a graphical bug they didn't account for. So. Patrol. I actually am going to avoid a patrol mission right now and go for a uh, core site. site so I can get more research income. So let's go Grassland Try, I guess. Site. I don't want to send everybody on this mission, because all I want to do is just get a mining site, and in case somehow my base gets attacked in a mission, which is, you know, possible. So let's just send two people on this. Mission initiated. Alright, no one was established, and I got a free mining site. Command center. Research. Alright, so my research income is increased because I got a mine, so let's bump that up. There we go. Research funding approved. Command center. It's asking me to garrison. I don't like that. It, usually when it says a garrison or a close patrol mission, it means they're getting closer to you. And usually you'll see a message that says, you know, your beacons got destroyed or something like that. So... Patrol. I feel like I want to do a patrol mission because I feel like I don't. I, 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 I know. I know you doing a garrison would you probably probably get me level two stuff, but I feel like I need to patrol now to make sure they're not going to get too close. Um, because my issue with the garrison mission is that I'll just sit on my butt and I don't really just feel like I want to do that immediately. So I'm gonna try to actually be a little more aggressive and steal some more ore. Survey mining site. Let's do this again. Let's actually say first. Establish mining, mining site. site. Survey mining site. All right, good. Kirk base. All right, research completed. It's still saying garrison. All right. So usually, you, if you have the research email enabled, you'll get notifications that you're getting research. So this usually tells command you to go to your command center, go to research, research, click on the flashing latest button, and it'll tell you what you've got. Now it won't let you scroll down for some reason. I don't understand why. Let's up, up that again. So you want these two numbers to be the same pretty much, if you can. If you want to be more special and specialize in your research, go ahead. But usually I like keeping this balanced. Research funding approved. So let's go to the vehicle Command facility. Center. Vehicle facility. So now it's time to upgrade. Still can't scroll down. So let's upgrade. So I do want to show you something. Um, assault armor is still the same in this game. Front's more protected than the back. But also, new types of armor that make it more visible to what you know is getting reduced. So ballistic and propelled weapons, which are pretty much missiles, 
are half off, or you know, I get 50% damage instead of 100. So that's good. Upgrade complete. Better drive Upgrade system. Complete. Go Pobble. Better shield. Um, there's a funny typo that usually stand sometimes it'll say standard STD in the shield and then just ST shield. But usually the higher the number, the better it is. There are different types of shield other than just standard shields. Upgrade. Complete. But we'll get to that later. Because we don't have the tech right now. Uh, right here, advanced scan is a better scan 3000. So just you can hit this Upgrade one. Complete. Uh, basic lock on computer. Upgrade no complete. So this is our first ejection based system for biodermes. And we have improved medical and then term safe. So actually, even though I'm not going to get any health per turn, I do want to go for turn safe. So just in case something goes wrong, I'll still have biodermes. And then I only get heavy plasma guns. So I actually am going to go and also have uh, two new weapons right here. So I am going to go heavy plasma gun. Upgrade complete. And then go 30mm chains, which are basically a better version of the 20mm. Upgrade complete. 40mm rangers are okay. Well they they just they have penetrating damage, although that's not the biggest concern to me, because if I can break shields easy, I'm not worried about just you know, free, like, an elf weapon that has range. Upgrade complete. So let's just crank that Upgrade up. Upgrade complete. And we do have some new components in here. We have a shield booster. Uh, shield amplifiers are just, um... So you see I have a 1200 shield. I don't know the exact number that it adds, but it's a little extra. So I am going to equip this. Upgrade complete. Let's just go with the usual Upgrade armor. Upgrade complete. Upgrade Upgrades. complete. Upgrade I think these complete. first three videos will just be the basic complete. explanation Upgrade stuff again. Complete. I can do it for the last time and then, you know, after the first like few videos I can do like a couple videos once I, you know, explain all the basics and then I can just go through and, you know, smack through the things. Vehicle Oops. modification completed. Upgrade complete. Twin e -beamer. Three shots. I'm gonna keep the heavy EMP gun, but give, um... Oh yeah, I forgot. Um... So in the first game, you also saw the compression lasers. Which were basically the same shields, but better armor. And they have shorter range in this game, generally. So I have a fun, like, funny complete. idea. I go, like, you know, SC-60s. And Upgrade this would be, like, complete. really short range. But, you know, powerful in that respect. I love how that only costs one more. It's kind of higher range, but I'm gonna go heavy EMP gun and turn it into 3 million chain stuff. Vehicle modification completed. Uh, this is my fun. This is a fun one in my opinion. Scan missiles. It's you know every 10 seconds fire one scan missile, but it locks onto the sensor and destroys it. Usually, even a scan missile is enough. But there is a heavy sensor missile, which is a better version. And also we have micro missile launchers back. They are definitely better in this game than they are in the last game. As you can see, we have 45 armor damage as opposed to 30. And eight range, so it's a little less range. But you generally you can fire more micro missile launchers in this one than three. I think you can fire roughly three or four a turn. I think it's three. It's still the same. So. No penetrating damage, it's fine. But the SG 60, but only you know three and a half seconds. So generally, I can fire one or two SGs. So generally, I can get more damage off with the micro missile launcher than the SG, although the SG is much safer in range. But because this unit is much more uh, close range focused, at least with the weapons I have configured. I'm gonna go for the more close range. So the target is the same. So I figured I'd mention pretty much every vehicle except for 
Well, actually, hold on. Uh, vehicles and the Mantis are allowed to plant mines. Upgrade And because I like using mines, I'm going to put it on one of the raiders here. So let's just put this up. Complete. I actually want to get a scan this week. Upgrade complete. And start stabling some. Upgrade complete. Uh, Upgrade complete. Do I want twenty beams? Mm, it doesn't really seem worth it. Might be good. Uh, since our missiles are a new one, Upgrade that complete. I'll Upgrade use in complete. later videos. Drive, usual stuff. Upgrade complete. Uh, Lancer. I've already got one unit with a mine. I don't feel like wanting another one, so we'll put a Upgrade shield complete. missile on this. Um, as you notice, some units only have two component slots or even one. So you do have to pick and choose what you want. So I can't get an ECM on this. You know, you know, like zero signal, you know, advanced single jammer and stuff like that to reduce the percentage, but right now I'll just go with the basic shield amp so I can just five up close. Upgrade complete. Actually, we'll go with the SC-1000. It's better shield, slightly less armor, even though it fires a tiny bit slower. It'll be much better when it comes to breaking Upgrade shield. So complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Vehicle modification completed. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Oh, advanced game. Upgrade complete. Did I get the sensor? Alright, yes I do. Okay. Perk base. So I configured everything there. Biodome facility. So as you can see, I did a mission. I've done three so far. Which, you know, there's the age, and I can rejuvenate that right now, and then I'll go back to zero. Command center. And right here you can see how many missions you've done. Attempted, so if you know, if you've attempted something but didn't complete it, it won't be the same number. So I want to keep these videos generally under an hour, just to, you know, make it easier to upload and make it more streamlined for you guys so you know what you guys say. Like, I'll call this video first hour. Three minutes. Alright, so we do have an exploration mission available. Exploration. Alright, what does it say here? Uh, there's, um, usually if you check the description, it'll say what you can get from completing it. So let's see here. Okay, so I'm seeing uh, energy matrix, vast amounts of energy. So it looks like it would upgrade my reactor level, potentially, if I complete this. But that is something Command I actually center. will do for next time. Um, I guess we'll do a garrison mission Patrol. like it recommends. Mission initiated. Perk base. Ooh, we have the special mission. This one's a fun one. But... Oh, there we go. So actually, this is about the end of that hour. So, I guess... As always, if you guys have any feedback, please let me know through comments and messages. You know, am I not doing the if... Um, is my voice too quiet? Um, stuff like... Is my going too slow? Am I over explaining it? You know, I guess questions like that. You know, don't be afraid to, you know, throw appropriate criticism at me. It's fine. But, and I think another one is, you know, how much would you can, might consider that I want would add it out? Are there some parts where I can pretty much just cut it right out and not need it? Usually, the way you guess you could say that is that if you don't really say I need to show this as much, I can uh, cut the eye a little more. So I guess at the end of this video I'll mention it. Um, I have started to use my editing software more often, and by that I mean I've finally figured out how to use it to a degree. 
don't expect any like super special effects. You know, don't expect anything big. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. So, you know, any, any feedback is appreciated. So I guess on that note, uh, this has been Holden or I is a weird, and I will see you guys next time.